Hello everybody! The RoboForex channel here, and we are starting the last week of July with a digest of the latest news from the financial markets. The end of July is usually neutral for capital markets. August is a little unsettled, but this year it is natural. Today we are traveling through regional statistics. We will take a look at the European data and forecast. Everything seems to stabilize here. Then we will move to the United States and find out what news comes from there, in addition to the number of cases of coronavirus. Finally, we will visit Japan and talk about its statistical reports. Let's say right away, nothing changes in the world of cryptocurrencies. For several weeks in a row, the same thing has been happening there. There are no abrupt movements, the news background is almost empty, and the market is still looking for a national idea. To not miss the long-awaited warm-up of this market, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell. Meanwhile, we proceed. Europe has started to publish statistics more and more actively. The old world is general focus of our attention these days. The European Union spent three days agreeing on crediting a large fund for restoring the economy, and now it is preparing a large block of significant digits. This week, notice the data issued by Germany. The country will publish retail sales statistics, the PMI, the Consumer Confidence Index, the information about inflation and the employment sector. If the situation in Germany turns out more or less stable, we will have a reason to relax a bit. This will mean that we have overcome the peak of the crisis. The recuperation will be long and hard, but it will inevitably follow. As one organism, the Eurozone will publish the unemployment rate. It might be somewhere near 7.5%. It is perfectly normal, though, because last year's digits were on pretty much the same level. Even if 2019 lacked such a delight as coronavirus. From the old world to the USA, we expected many reports here. Check the statistics of durable goods orders. The indicator is volatile, as we kept seeing, but quite informative. Its structure, apart from transport orders, is typically very illustrative. It includes all household appliances, gadgets, and other expensive devices. The indicator is supposed to reflect the American consumer's readiness to buy, so let us wait and see. The new week also promises a meeting of the US Federal Reserve System on July 28th and 29th. The interest rate has stuck in the target range of 0, 0.25% annually, which practically means zero. No changes are expected here. The only thing that may change is the evolution of the current state of the US economy. By midsummer, stimulation must have given its fruit. Unlike President Trump, who keeps mentioning the possibility of the second wave of the coronavirus, the head of the Fed, Jerome Powell, will most likely abstain from giving the market such a good chance to work. He will concentrate his commentary on the economy, publish data and expectations. We presume that the things will be accurate and elegant. Today is not the time for abrupt moves. Give a thumb up if you agree. This week, the US has published a GDP report for the second quarter on Thursday, July 30th. The forecast shows a decline of 5%. In April, June, the blow on this area was the hardest, so no one will be surprised by weaker results. To understand the US consumer's general mood, check the statistics of personal income and spending of US citizens in June. Here, spending must have started to grow. The question is, what's happened to the income? The reports are due on Thursday and Friday. The US block is over, now let's move to Japan. This week, Japanese reports will take substantial space on the microeconomic calendar. The country will publish reports on retail sales, unemployment, and industrial production. Japan has been balancing on the verge of deflation. If the consumer has been a bit more active than before, we may count on increase in the consumer price index in the nearest future. This issue is the sharpest pain in the back for the Japanese Ministry of Finance and Central Bank. Then yen itself reacts to the statistics very feebly. It looks weak because the investing world does not need protective assets. However, this is good for the Japanese economy. Our journey all over this week's news has come to an end. But it doesn't mean we are saying farewell. Subscribe to our channel to not miss anything important. Click on the bell and put a like on this video if you feel like it. Take care and see you soon!